Hello, welcome to Calico Flower Studio. I'm Danny, and today I'm going to make a mixed media collage with plenty of feline help. So lots of cuteness coming your way and lots of art, some cutting and pasting. Uh, so yeah, just sit back and relax and enjoy. Oh, and here's my little helper. That was fun. So let's get started. So I've got my notebook here and my materials. And this is a piece of fabric and another piece of fabric, kind of a lighter color. This is a piece of tissue paper with a drawing of a cat on it. I used that in a music video. It's crayon on paper more crayon on paper. This is an old collage, a little chunk of it. This is um, a floral pattern napkin. And a piece of tissue paper with some paint stamped on it. Thank you, Clover. Uh, this is a piece of construction paper some charcoal on paper, um, a piece of canvas with a print on it, and some more uh, crayon on paper from an old drawing. So yeah, let's see. What should we do, Clover? Spread everything out here. Hmm. Where to begin? See if I can make this into like a leaf shape. I'm really into um, that shape right now. Watch out! Huh, that piece looks good just the way it is. Same with that one. Hmm. Just kind of laying everything out right now because I'm not sure how I want to begin. Sometimes you have to play around for a minute. Gosh, my camera's shaking. another leaf shape. Hmm, let's just get a bunch of leaf shapes. This one's going to be funky though. Clover's over there just organizing my material for me. It's 
Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> this is my, this is just my everyday life, you know, I just like work around the cats. I just, I don't want to dampen their sense of wonder. Hmm, maybe I can, I don't know. Make this a little smaller. I've got this extra piece here that's kind of interesting. All right, let's get started. Let's start gluing stuff down. Let's just jump right in because sometimes I can deliberate for so long and uh, once I start gluing, everything tends to, to work itself out. just gonna be spontaneous now and gluey fingers Clover's being so good hmm yeah I don't know about Mm, that piece is so fun. Mm, sort of an echo of that earlier piece, just a residual cut from the material that I wasn't even t intending on using, but I think it's interesting. It kind of balances the other one. Right in the middle, let's cover some ground here. This piece is a lot of fun pattern so far. I didn't pick very many solid pieces of material, material with solid colors, that is. I love to take pieces and rip them up into a lot of tiny pieces and then place them on the collage in some kind of pattern. I like the repetition. It kind of gives it a little rhythm. I'm gonna make like like a plant. Clover is playing with the spider plant. Oh, say that five times fast. Playing with the spider plant. I think this is the one piece of solid material that I have. Solid colors. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's turn it this way. Sometimes I need to get a different perspective. This one feels a little more challenging than usual, but that's okay. Sometimes it's really easy. I just get into a very easy flow that just kind of feels good the whole time. But every once in a while, I mean, this happens more so with um, my larger paintings that I create because uh, I make these collages with my residual material from my studio, but I also create large paintings. That is, uh, the collage elements in those are my residual material as well, but um, I also incorporate paint and printmaking and drawing as well. But um, I get, you know, I get these moments more often with those pieces where I am. Um, it's not always just like a, an easy, smooth flow. Sometimes I get stumped. And that's, that's okay. That's life, right? Maybe I try something and it doesn't work. And I try my darndest to make it work, but it just doesn't. And so then I just um, have the courage to make something completely new right on top of it. I don't know if I'm at that point yet with this piece, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm interested to see where it goes. And how, what kinds of things will pop up and how I'll have to problem solve. I know it sounds kind of weird to think of making art as problem solving, but um, it is in a way, it's just the kind of problem you're solving is maybe not something most people... Um, encounter <laughs> it's like I guess any artist has to deal with this problem and it's really just how do I use my creative language to express myself in a way that feels right that sort of like hits the spot you know and for me specifically that means making something visual that um makes me feel good and feels like an expression of me or or just you know um, something that has special meaning to me I guess for these small collages um, it it's an expression of myself but um, maybe not s so much in a uh, direct way, you know, and that it is uh, explicitly <laughs> describing who I am and what I believe in and what I stand for and yada yada. <laughs> um, it's um, it's kind of like it's more it more so has special meaning to me, I think, because of the things that it's made out of and the colors and the um, composition is like like the materials are just I think it's so special because this is all basically um, just residue from previous projects it's not like material that and there's nothing wrong with this but it's, you know, not material that I, like, bought at a store in the, you know, scrapbooking section or something. <laughs> um, it's just, like, leftover stuff from other drawings and paintings. And I think that I just love the idea that I can um, take these otherwise, what would otherwise be discarded material and, and make something beautiful. 
or at least something that is an expression of what uh, I think is beautiful. You know, you might wonder, like, what? Why is it important to express what you think is beautiful? And I think that it's kind of like has to do with what brings us joy. And um, gratitude f for being alive. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point in living? That sounds really dark. <laughs> but I guess what I'm, all I'm saying is uh, the world needs beauty. That's all I mean. Okay. So at this point, I'm kind of um, unsure of what to do with this collage. And I'm thinking, I think I'm having one of those moments I described earlier where um, I just have to have the courage to kind of like do something crazy to totally turn the whole thing um, in a new direction, like maybe covering something up. Or in this case, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out all of the s unused space. Um, I mean, I guess it's just the, uh, the paper that I am using as the base for the collage right now. I'm just removing that. And I, because I, th I think what this piece needs is it needs something in the back. It needs something behind it in the background. And um, because, like I said earlier, the the material I chose has a lot of pattern and texture. There's not a whole lot of solid colors, and I I really believe in balance and and rhythm. And um, sometimes, well, not sometimes, always that includes the resting points, points where you rest your eyes. And um, so I need something solid. So I grab this um, peel and stick. No, I'm just going to get rid of that thing. Um, <laughs> this peel and stick vinyl that I've had for a long time, but I like rare. I don't, I rarely use it. I don't, I don't use it enough because it's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> But um, I'm going to use that as my background, so it's going to kind of like give this piece a little oomph, something solid in the background, create some new shapes, because it's really the shapes that are created when the piece is on top of it. So it's the negative space. And I got this wax paper here, too. I know it's another pattern, but um, I'm just trying to bring in some warmth and, and so that it's, it's not just one element that I'm adding to the back, but another one to kind of give it even more depth. Hmm. It feels kind of 60s to me. maybe 50s, I don't know, like the geometric, trendy, uh, like amoeba-like shapes for <laughs> things in design. I don't know if that was the 60s or... Here we go. I added a little bit of some uh, spikes. I just can't. It's, I find I struggle with keeping things simple, I tell you. But that's like a goal that I have in my life every day. Try to keep it simple.
All right, here we go. I'm gonna try to use a technique. I have some friends that work at a um, like a graphics shop. They like um, make signs and like vinyl uh, vinyl signage, and I wanna try to. Um, I hope I make them proud the way I stick this on here. <laughs> This is not something I do every day. Try not to get any bubbles. And sort of peel it, rubbing it as I go. Okay. That turned out alright. I don't see any bubbles there. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, wrinkles from the texture of the paper and the glue, but that's okay. It's gonna, that part's going to be covered by this. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Now, I added glue just to the back of the collage as opposed to on the base because I want to avoid getting glue on that shiny vinyl because it might kind of, um, it might uh, make the vinyl less shiny sort of mute the reflectiveness with the dried glue. Hmm. I think I just have like a couple mm, tiny details to add. I have this leftover vinyl, these little triangles from when I cut off, cut those spikes on the right, or the points. I have all these triangles left over. I think I'm going to do something with those. tricky to peel the back of these things off. Hmm. Well, I think I'm done. I think this resolved itself really well. It's a real funky piece, huh? Purple and gold. Shout out to the Reynoldsburg Raiders. It's my hometown. Unless you're a Lakers fan, and I get that too. But yeah, this um, you can you can visit my website calicoflowerstudio.com to purchase this piece. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks for watching. Oh, look who's joined the party. This is Dahlia, Clover's uh, better behaved older sister. What do you think, huh? What do you think? Oh, thank you. <laughs>